everybody welcome back to my channel this is Kathy at Attic Treasures etc and today I thought I would have some fun playing with um, some doilies and this uh, kids picture story pad and a stamp of a of a teacup so why don't we go ahead and get started and I'll show you what I have in mind so the first thing I want to do is take one of these doilies which I got at the Dollar Tree and a piece of this picture story pad that I found at a thrift store. I only need one piece. And I'm choosing this, whoops, there we go with my doily. I'm choosing this because it's very lightweight. And I, I want it to be lightweight because of what I'm going to do with this doily. So let me put this, um, well I can set that over here. I'm going to take my uh, Distress Collage Medium and I'm going to cover the back of this doily with the Distress Collage Medium and I'm going to use the collage brush as well but you can, you know, you don't have to use this, you can use any white glue, um, Elmer's even probably, or a glue stick but I'm, I'm just doing it this way because I have it and it's here and I really like um, this Distress Collage Medium, especially for things like this. Okay, let's get this covered. I want to make sure it has plenty of glue and it's completely covered. Okay. I'm going to peel it off gently, very gently because I don't want it to tear. And then I'm going to take it and lay it on here so that it's centered on this on this top line. I want half, I want the, the, the blank half to be on the top of the doily and the lined half to be on the bottom of the doily. So I'm using these little indentations like here in the scallop, <laughs> let me do it this way, to get it uh, centered. There. So you can see that I've got a line coming from this scallop. Nope, I didn't do it. <laughs> let's see. Let's find this. Let's find maybe a different center. Maybe it's not evenly scalloped. There we go. Okay, now, now that I've got it centered on this line, I'm going to use this other little thing that I got at the Dollar Tree to just kind of gently roll. Now, I found this little roller um, at the Dollar Tree in the makeup section. I don't really know what it's for, but it works really well for this type of a project. There's another thing I use it for too, which I'll get to in a minute. I just want to make sure that it's totally stuck down. Oops, that one kind of tore a little bit, but I just put it back just in time. Go around all the edges here. Making sure it's stuck down nice and evenly. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to fully dry, and while I do that, I'm going to take this little piece of cardstock that I have and a piece of a napkin that I've already pulled the backing off. And just to show you what this is, this is IHR napkins uh, made with love in Germany, and I found this at a local a local store. Now. I, here, you know what, I'm going to um, put the cover, put the top on this collage medium so it doesn't dry, and I'm wrapping my brush in a baby wipe, and that one's getting kind of dry, so I'm going to grab another one. Okay, set the brush aside, and I'm going to take this stamp that I have of a teacup, that, and you know what, and I really don't use it very often because it just seems, I don't know, I just... I've tried using it on pages in a journal and I just haven't been that excited about it. 
and I have this uh, jet black stays on and I'm going to cover I'm, I'm just going to stamp on the napkin here I want to make sure it's got enough ink And I'm using stays on because I'm going to decoupage it onto that um, piece of cardstock and stays on won't smear with the wet glue. And that's pretty light. I don't really like the way that turned out. Okay, this impression turned out better. I did it off camera so that in case it didn't work, then I wouldn't have to make you guys sit through that. So I'm going to decoupage it onto this little piece of cardstock using the Distress Collage Medium again, but any, you know, Mod Podge or whatever would work just as well. I want to do it without tearing this napkin. So I'm going to use uh, this little roller again, very gently, just making sure it gets on, uh, you know, adhered all the way. Without any air bubbles, if possible. I don't know why, but I always seem to get air bubbles. Okay. Okay, that worked pretty well. I'm going to uh, go ahead and decoupage over the top of it as well. Just to kind of seal it. And then I'm going to set this one aside to dry as well. Now, if you don't like uh, the brush strokes, you can just... Um, do like I'm doing here where I just take my finger and just kind of swirl it around and then that gets rid of the brush strokes but you know I don't mind them necessarily but that's just one way to get rid of them and set this off to dry okay let's come back to this and now I'm gonna cut all the way around and um, you know just get it all cut out I wish I had a smaller piece of, you know, paper that would work just as well, but because the doily is kind of wide, I do have a, a paper pad that's lined, but um, it, the doily was just a tad too wide, so I grabbed this. Okay, that's my rough cut. I'm just going to cut around. So I hope everybody's doing okay. We have been super, super busy all month long with our um, backyard rehab that we started last year when we planted 24 or 23 rather arborvitaes um, along the back part of our property as a privacy fence. They're coming along nicely. They look really good. And um, we staked out or I guess we, we used uh, black plastic to mark out areas around the side and the back of our backyard that we want to rototill and plant things in. Um, so that's just about ready to be rototilled now but we also wanted to extend our patio because it was very small <laughs> tiny little area and uh, so my husband built a, a frame next to the patio with some four by fours. And then we um, filled it with gravel and now that's where our, our gas fire pit is. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Um, there are some, some areas where I'm gonna touch up with some more glue and then I'm gonna sew it on the sewing machine around the edges. 
So let me just look and make sure. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to touch this up with glue and then sew it around the edges and then I'll be right back. All right, so I have sewn all around it and I also cut around, uh, cut out the image of the teacup and used a, a an exacto knife to cut out the you know the part right here by the handle um, now whenever I'm sewing something you know whatever the top is it looks nice and smooth the stitching but as the needle goes through it pops up um, the the paper or whatever it is so I use this to kind of smooth those uh, bumps down and I like it a lot better when it's all done Yeah, that looks better. It doesn't look so bumpy. It looks, looks smoother. The stitches lay down better. Okay. All right, now I'm going to fold it in half right on the center line here. I also put um, a coat of the distress collage medium on top of this just to kind of seal it and give it a little bit of strength. Now the other thing I want to do is tuck in these these two scallops here on the edge because when I go to put it on a page obviously it's going to be too wide. So I'm going to tuck these in by just kind of you know, folding it at the at the indentation there, and then meet up at the at the crease of the center fold, and then fold it, and do the same thing on the other end, like that. There, okay. Now it looks like a little tablecloth. Can even fold it you know kind of adjust a little bit it looks like a little table with a tablecloth that I want to put this little teacup on top of so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ink around it so the idea is that when I put it on the page and open it up then you've got all this writing area and some of it will go off the page a little bit but that's okay all right so I'm really liking the way this is coming out I'm just adjusting the fold here in the center a little bit. So that's just about perfect. There. So now I'm going to ink around it. And um, before I do that, maybe I'll put this on here. So I fussy cut this flower out of a flower book. And I'm just going to glue that on the front to make it look like a fancy tablecloth. And for that, I'm just going to use glue stick. And I'm using Scotch Create glue stick. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. And the paper is kind of thin, but glossy. Uh, and that's okay. I guess if you don't want the gloss, you could always uh, put a coat of Mod Podge or something on it or Distress Collage Medium, and it kind of tones it down a little bit if you don't want the shine. I'm not minding the shine, so I want to make sure this fits on here without any of the pieces um, of the flower going off of the page there. Okay, good. I thought for a minute I put it on the wrong side. Okay, because I want I want the uh, the lines on the bottom and the the uh, blank part on the top. Okay, so. Now what color should I ink it? Um, you know, I don't think I am going to ink it. I think I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to glue it to this page right about here. And the teacup is going to go on the top. And it's going to be a pocket. Um, okay, so I'm going to use my um, art glitter glue. I'm going to just glue the back part of this. Okay. 
Okay, so anyway, um, we got our patio area done. Um, my husband made a, a privacy screen. Well, we both worked on it. We got some lattice and stained it, which is kind of a pain to stain lattice, but we did it. And um, he attached it, and now we've got a little privacy screen between the patio and the next door neighbor and they finally sold that house so we have a new neighbor uh, next to us as well and she seems really nice and we put up our string lights that we've had hanging around for quite a quite a long time and just finally happy to be able to use them okay so now we have some extra writing space here a little fold up and then I'm gonna um, put this on and on the paper I'm going to glue it to the page but I want it to be a pocket so I'm going to make sure since this is going to be kind of delicate I want to make sure the handle is glued down as well okay we've also um, painted our shed <laughs> and we first First, my husband painted it the one color that I had picked out, and when it came, when it went on, I didn't like it. So I hated to tell him, but I just said, I just don't like it. So we got a different color, which is just a deeper shade of the original color, and used that instead, and I really liked it. So he did all that, and then I painted the trim, and, um, and got that all done. That took quite a, quite a bit of time. Okay, so, so far I'm really liking this. Okay, now we need a tag to go in the pocket. Okay, I want this pin to go, there we go. Um, I want a tag to go in the pocket and I want it to be a tea bag tag, right? So. I have my little tag punch and I have some more of this um, cardstock. So, making sure I can, there we, yeah, that'll work just fine. So, I'm going to glue the, the tea bag to this cardstock. I'm going to cut it in half because I don't need the bottom half. And I don't know why I put my art glitter glue away, because that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so anyway, finally the, the shed is completely painted. And the trim is painted, even though uh, we had issues with the color. Um, the final color that we chose turned out really well, but of course that all takes time. And... Um, Oh, and then we took some of the cinder blocks that we had around our original fire pit area in the middle of the yard and made a potting bench out of it. And I'm really, really happy with that. So that's on one end of the shed. Okay, this needs to be on here pretty securely. We attached a rain chain to uh, the front of the shed. We got that on Amazon Prime Day, and it looks really good, but it was too long, so we had to cut some pieces off of it. And then I used those two pieces, and um, following a Pinterest example, I made another rain chain for the back, and that one hasn't gone up yet. But it will. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. And then the next project is going to be to um, stake out the garden area where the fire pit fire pit originally was. And uh, we got some chips from our neighbor, some wood chips, 
and <laughs> this isn't working <laughs> and we've had them for a while um, but we need to my husband wants to make a frame for it for the garden whoops so that eventually we can put up a fence around it okay that looks good doesn't it perfect okay so I'm gonna take some purple do I have any purple yeah okay so he was getting ready to do that and he you know got it all nice and the edges all nice and even around the um, around where the garden area is gonna be and of course the ground is super uneven and um, he can't lay the boards in there <laughs> the 4x4s four to, to make a frame because the ground is way too uneven so now he's off at the store at Lowe's getting cement so that he can even out the um, the ground where the boards are going to go and then we can spread out the chips and then I can uh, paint the garden, the raised bed garden pieces. They're actually elevated. Got them at Costco. Elevated gar raised garden beds. I don't know. They're self-watering, which I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but I'm excited to find out. Okay, this is, this is um, seedless preserves. Now, we need a little tea bag tab and I have some from the same tea so I'm just going to take my little tiny attacher I think my husband just got home Okay, I think that is absolutely adorable. I hope you like it. <laughs> okay, so that's going to go in this journal. And um, now we have this, this, this little tag with writing space on the back. And this has writing space here. And it looks like a little tablecloth. And I just absolutely love it. So that is going to go in this journal here. And I think you can um, really start to see the possibilities of doing this where you have a, um, a stamp that, you know, you're not really, maybe it's too big um, and you don't want to just stamp it on a page. Maybe you can make some other things with it. And then some fun things to do with... Um, with the doilies and I have a couple of examples here um, where I've taken like th this was my prototype for this so I've got this one for another journal and I actually even uh, took um, one one that I cut the you know, instead of folding them in, I cut these pieces off, so it's just this. And then because I wanted to use it as a prototype, I took a piece of cardstock and traced around it. So now I've got a, um, like a, a, what do you call it, um, a template to make more. Okay, so now I made this one with some, um, just some scrapbook paper and some copy dyed paper and this can be another little writing pad inside a journal or you can even make another little journal out of it with paper inside so there are lots of ways to use your doilies 
and your stamps that maybe you hadn't thought of and even something to do with your little uh, with your tea bag envelope so how cute is that so I hope you like this um, this is a lull in the action before next month when we're going to be super busy with a congregation project that's really going to keep my husband busy which is why we've been working all month to try to get the backyard um, done as much as possible because next month he's going to be almost completely unavailable for that so we have been racing against the clock okay but my involvement's kind of done for now, so I'm hoping to be um, be able to be back in my craft room more regularly. So thanks for your patience and, and um, your continued support. And if you did like this, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you will. And if you have, thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, let the serendipity find you. Happy crafting, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, everybody.